Good morning from Rome. We are in the process of taking a walking tour of the city. Now I'm going to be doing some dedicated videos to some of the more famous sites like the Circus Maximus and the Colosseum, uh, but I also want to take a chance to show you some of the other things that you can see in Rome. Uh, so we're just going to highlight some of those things. I won't narrate everything. Uh, I'll put some things up on the screen, some background music with some B-roll, but uh, also talk a little bit about the history of some of the sites we're going to see in the video. I invite you to join me on the journey. So we're here at one of the most iconic sites in Rome, and you can tell that by all the people that are here. Uh, this is the Trevi Fountain. It gets its name from the three roads uh, that converged uh, in this neighborhood. And it was constructed in the early to mid 18th century, and it's actually fed by water from the Virgin Aqueduct, which is one of the Roman aqueducts uh, that was original, was damaged during some of the uh, barbarian invasions, but was reconstructed and feeds the water for this fountain to this day. So the building behind me looks like it could be right at home here with the Roman Forum nearby and the Colosseum down at the other end, but it's actually much newer than that. It was built to honor Victor Emmanuel, who was the king who united Italy in the 19th century. There's a statue, a uh, very prominent statue of him, an equestrian statue uh, that's large enough for people to have lunch inside of. Uh, you have the Tomb of the Unknown Warrior, which is in front and constantly guarded as well as uh, with a eternal flame, two eternal flames. Uh, and it's all brand new, uh, at least brand new by Roman standards. So here's one of the most famous structures in this part of Rome. This is Trajan's Column. It was built in the early part of the second century AD. It was to commemorate Trajan's victory over the Dacians. And it actually tells the story of that victory. Uh, and you just, it just kind of curves around higher and higher. It's all one long story uh, for his wars during that time period. And uh, it was all color originally. And you can see that people can go to the top, although I don't know that people do anymore. Incredible work for that time period. Each of these forums has a statue, and these are reproductions, these are not original statues to the time period, um, but has a statue of the, the Roman emperor for whom that forum was constructed, or under whom it was constructed. So here, of course, we have Augustus, the first Roman emperor, and this is the Forum of Augustus. So this is the Forum of Peace. It was built by Vespasian, who was the fourth of the uh, year of the four emperors in AD 69. In the aftermath of all of the bloodshed associated with the constant change in emperors, and also Vespasian and his son Titus uh, suppressing a bloody revolt of the Jews that ends up uh, in the destruction of the temple in Jerusalem, he built this temple as a monument to peace. And this is what remains of it.
So one of the things about these forums is that they were originally built as forums, as kind of public areas, but over the years they've had a number of other uses. Uh, there have been vineyards and fruit trees and you know, all kinds of different things here. Uh, and for a while, people had their homes. And so this area right here, these were actually homes in the centuries after the forum was built. So this is a site I've been looking forward to seeing. This is the Arch of Constantine. It was commissioned by the Senate after Constantine's victory at the Battle of Milvian Bridge, which secured the throne for him. It was fought right here in Rome uh, in the year 312, and this was built in 315 to commemorate his triumph there. This is the Arch of Titus. It's behind a little fence, so I'm trying to zoom in between the pieces of the fence here. It uh, commemorated uh, the Emperor Titus, and it was built in the year 81 by Domitian, who was Titus's brother, who succeeded him as emperor. Well, it's very noisy here. We are in a very crowded part of Rome, so I'm gonna hold the microphone nice and close, but. This is the Pantheon. We're gonna take a look inside. It's the best preserved by far uh, large Roman temple to exist here in Rome today. Uh, gonna to tell you a little bit of the history as we look around. So each of these columns that you see on the front of the Pantheon, they weigh 60 tons and they were brought here by ship from Egypt. You can just imagine the work that was involved just for the columns alone. So this existing structure was built in the early part of the second century uh, AD uh, under Emperor Hadrian, but there had been a previous pantheon on this site that had been previously destroyed and then rebuilt. And so this building here has stood for nearly 2,000 years. You can see here there are some drainage holes on the floor, and the floor kind of runs slopes down a little bit here because obviously uh, the light is coming from an eye in the center it's open so when it rains it'll there will be moisture that would come down into here so it has to go somewhere and it goes into those holes they're around several different places and then it drains into pipes and is carried away all right so a little fun food fact for you uh, queen margarita uh, of savoy that you see here uh, who was the queen under Umberto I. Uh, when you come to Europe, uh, the most popular type of pizza, which is basically like a cheese pizza would be in the United States, is margarita pizza. And it's named after the queen. Well, it's not one of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but he is a famous uh, Italian. This is the tomb of Raphael. So there are a few spots here where you can actually see the original wall that hasn't been covered up. And this is one of those spots. One of the things you'll notice is that the sun shines on a specific spot and it was designed so that as often as possible on April 21st, which was the, the birthday of Rome, that it would shine right above the entrance there. And it was very symbolic that way. You also notice the, the various squares, and there was gold at one time on the ceiling, and there were stars. There were 140 of them. There's five rows of 28. Some of that gold, they don't know what happened to it, but some of the gold they know ended up at the Hagia Sophia in what is today Istanbul. 
So the Pantheon is a working church, and so they have worship services here every week. And I'm told that the acoustics are quite incredible, despite the structure. And if you've ever been in a round structure like this, you've been in ones where the echo is terrible. That doesn't seem to be the case here. So I really have to say it, uh, this is really probably the most incredible thing I've seen in Rome so far. And we've seen some amazing history, but it's so well preserved and it's so far back in history. And a lot of that has to do with the fact that it was turned into a church. And so that helped to make sure that it got preserved. Uh, do not miss this if you get the chance. This is definitely a must see when you're in Rome. Thank you.